Hi, I'm Claire and this is my reading wrap up for August and September 2018. I know, a wrap up, I haven't done one of those on the channel for a long while. That's because honestly for a while before August I had been not reading very much fiction at all. I'd been kind of like starting things and not finishing them or reading a lot of fanfic but not really reading a lot of books, even stuff that I was kind of excited to read. Fast forward a couple of months I went to Worldcon in San Jose, California where I was basically immersed in like SFF literary fandom and we talked about books the entire time. I met up with a lot of bookish friends of mine from the internet, a lot of booktubers especially. I saw a lot of really cool authors reading from their books and talking about like their process and what their plans were. All of these things together I really felt like oh my god I need to like be reading all of the things right now. And I actually started reading on my way to Worldcon. I read Artificial Condition by Martha Wells. This is the second book in the Murderbot Diaries series and I love this series so so much. On the plane I was listening to the audiobook for this. I actually bought this copy at Worldcon and Martha Wells signed it for me which was lovely. I of course also bought the third book in the series, Rogue Protocol, and I read that one on the way back, basically. As many of you will know, I absolutely love this series. This is about a security unit robot that calls itself Murderbot. It's hacked its government module, which means that now it has free will, and basically all that it wants to do is like sit around and watch a bunch of media that is downloaded off of the internet and not have to deal with stupid humans who don't know how to protect themselves from dying. In the first book Murderbot is hired to protect a survey team that's going to like figure out if a new planet is habitable or not and then of course problems arise and there are like murders and things and Murderbot has to protect all of its humans from all the dangers that they don't realize are there and then at the end end of the first book a fairly significant thing happens for Murderbot. I don't want to spoil it too much but in Artificial Condition Murderbot is kind of trying to figure out more about its past and the reason that it named itself Murderbot which is that there is something in its past it can kind of remember but not really. In this third book, Rogue Protocol, Murderbot goes to a mining colony to investigate some shady dealings by the company that ordered the survey that was in the first book. So these two books along with the fourth book in the series Exit Strategy they all have ties to the first novella. These four novellas together form like a little mini series and then there's going to be a Murderbot novel in the same world but that is going to form a new arc for the characters so I'm really excited for that but that's not coming out for a really really long time. I'll be telling you more about this series when we come to my October wrap up because I read exit strategy in October. Next up is something that I'm super super excited about. I started reading this in August and finished it in September. The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R. Tolkien. I had not reread this book in so 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 long and the demographically similar Jennies at the Reading the End book cast started doing a read-along of Lord of the Rings and I decided to go along with that because I'd been wanting to reread it for a long time. Honestly I think the last time that I fully read those books I was in high school so this has been just a delightful experience getting through like rereading all of them. I've finished The Two Towers now, I'm about to start on The Return of the King. It's been such an interesting read along to take part in because of course even though I know what happens, I've read those books before, I've seen the movies, it's sometimes difficult to remember which bit was in the book, which bit was in the movies. The movies are relatively faithful to the books but still there are some differences. It's been just really interesting to go through and read them and see like the difference in pacing. This book especially, the pacing is so weird. Like there is so much wandering around the Shire at the beginning. It's such a slow start. I know this is not like a fresh hot take. Many people have said this. The Tom Bombadil stuff is a little excruciating for me. I know many people 
love it, many people hate it. I know it's a bit of a Marmite thing, but anyway, this has been so lovely to reread, and I want to do a mini series like of videos, just one on each of the books, so I don't want to talk about it too much. But if you're interested in rereading these, the read along is still going on, and the reading the end book cast, we are, I think, about to finish book two, so of course we're <laughs> quite a bit in now, but what I did at the beginning of the read-along when I wasn't quite caught up with them is that I would just like wait to listen to an episode until uh, I had finished the relevant section of the book and that worked really well for me so I'll leave a link to that podcast in the description box. Next up I read The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal and this I was really excited about ahead of time because it is in the same universe as The Lady Astronaut of Mars, a short story of Mary Robinette Kowal's that like won a Hugo and made me cry. I was super excited to see just the beginning of The Lady Astronaut, the start of Elmer's story and we start in the 1940s, 1950s when a meteorite falls in the ocean right outside the east coast of the US. It's a pretty bad event. However, Elmer York, our protagonist, who is a amazing mathematician and later becomes a computer at NASA, she does some math and she is the one that realizes it wasn't just bad, it's an extinction level event. I really, really loved this book. There is so, so much in it. We don't get a whole lot of historical science fiction, but I think we should have more of it because this was just really, really great. Like a really interesting, crunchy alternate history that went into so, so many things. Anyway, I liked it. As you can probably tell, you will be hearing more about it because there is another book coming out in the Lady Astronaut series called The Faded Sky. I think it's actually out already. I just haven't read it yet. I am looking forward to reading it really soon, but I've got so many things at the moment. <laughs> and finally, I read a couple of novellas as research for my SFF starter pack video, and I'm so, so glad that I did because they were both really, really great novellas. The Black God's Drum by P. Jelly Clark was something that I wanted to read for a really, really long time, had it on my most anticipated reads of the year was not disappointed at all. This is a steampunk novella that is set in New Orleans, but it's an alternate history New Orleans where like the Civil War didn't go quite as it did in actual history and New Orleans is like this neutral city where slavery has been abolished and the conflict uh, does not basically touch the city. Our main character is a girl called Creeper who loves to sit on the outer wall of the city and watch all of the airships come into New Orleans. Of course it's got many airships because steampunk and I love it. But one day Creeper overhears a conversation between some extremely shady individuals about something called the Black God's Drum. She knows what that is and she knows it's bad if it falls into the hands of bad people. One thing that I loved about this book is that it's quite self-contained. By the end of the novella, you've read a full story, you don't feel like, oh, I need more because I have so many questions. Of course, I loved the story and I would love to have more in that universe, but if I don't have more in that universe, like, I don't feel like I'm missing anything specifically. The final thing that I read in September was On a Red Station Drifting by Alia de Bodard. This is in the Bodard Zuya universe. It's about two women, Lynn and Quinn, and basically Lynn comes to the Red Station, which is a prosperous station as a refugee. She had to escape her own world where she was a magistrate because of political disagreements, and she comes to Prosper Station as a refugee, and the family gives her asylum because she is a distant cousin. She's not happy with the status that she's given on the station. She wants to do more, but Quinn, the woman who is in charge of running the station, does not at all trust her, and she has a lot of other problems to deal with. Stations in this world are run by what are called mines, capital M mines, basically like the memories of the ancestors of the people that have set up the station, and it's like 
the thing that feels really like mythological and magical when you read it but it's actually all like nanobots and stuff like that so that that was a really cool aspect of the novella. It's just got a lot in a very small <laughs> novella and I really enjoyed like how intriguey and politicky it felt and how much it reminded me of stuff like and Lecky and Thess Dickinson, stuff like that, that is really about the nitty gritty of, you know, bureaucracy and how that intersects with politics and government and family intrigue and that kind of thing. So I thought the feel of the novella was really, really great. It didn't come to quite as conclusive an ending as I would personally have liked, but I don't think it failed at what it was trying to achieve. I think at what it was trying to do, it did well. It's just that what it was trying to do is not my absolute favorite thing. <laughs> I like to have everything like tied up in a nice bow at the end. And that's not what every writer wants to do and that is fine. I don't know, I feel like I'm being really negative about it when in fact I quite liked it and I definitely want to read more in Alia de Barad's Zuya universe. So I don't want to seem too negative about it because I actually quite liked it. So that's it, this was my wrap up for August and September. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am super, super happy to be reading more and more regularly Finally, I hope this wasn't too rambly. One thing I wanted you all to let me know your thoughts on is what do you think I should do for like books that I'm talking about in other videos? I feel weird sometimes going, here are some books, you've definitely heard me talk about them before, let me tell you about them again in this video, like if I'm repeating myself, or is it really annoying if I say, well, I've talked about these in such and such videos, here's a link, go and look at it. Is it more annoying to maybe hear about something twice in two different ways, or is it more annoying to like be told to go over there to check out a link. Does it make a difference if I'm telling you to go and see a video that I've already made and already put out? Or if I'm saying, you know, I'm not gonna say too much about fellowship right now because there will be a full video in future. I would love your thoughts about this because I'm not quite sure how to handle it. So please do let me know and let me know also what you've been reading recently. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.